This is the world's first AMD powered 3-in-1 tablet from Menace Forum known as the V3. I've done a couple videos on it, but today we've turned it into the world's first Steam tab. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Steam Deck OS running on the Menace Forum V3 3-in-1 tablet. Now, if you're not familiar with this device, basically what we've got here is an AMD Ryzen 8840U powered tablet with a 14-inch display, 2560 by 1600. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz and a one terabyte M.2 SSD. This thing is great. It performs absolutely amazingly with Windows. I've done a few videos if you're interested in checking that out. I'll leave links for those down below. But as you can see here, we're no longer running Windows. We've basically got the same kind of operating system that comes pre-installed on the Steam Deck. And I really do wish we could use SteamOS officially from Valve, but they haven't released an image for anything other than the Steam Deck itself. So for this setup here, we're actually going to be using Chimera OS. There are other similar operating systems based on Linux out there that kind of give us the same features that the Steam Deck has, but my personal favorite is Chimera. And just a quick rundown here, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U, the Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 6400, a 14 inch 165 hertz free sync glare free IPS display, which is absolutely beautiful. Resolution of 2560 by 1600, up to 500 nits of brightness. Quad speakers, 50.82 watt hour battery, and the weight on this is around 946 grams. Of course, not everybody who picks this tablet up is going to want to install a Linux gaming operating system, but personally, I think it's really awesome just to test it out here. And with this, we do have all of the features that are on the Steam Deck. The only thing we really can't change from our little performance menu over here is the TDP, but we've got another application for that, or we could always go into the BIOS. But yeah, when it comes to variable refresh rate, this display supports it on the V3. And everything worked with this operating system. I've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth right now. Heading into the settings, if we wanted to update Steam itself, we could definitely do it. Chimera does offer rolling updates, so it will check once you boot up, but you could always go in here and check for a Steam update also. Moving down a bit, you can see we've got that Ryzen 7 8840U, eight cores, 16 threads. And in this, it will go up to 28 watts. At least that's what it's set at from the factory in the BIOS but we could up this or lower it. And yes, yeah, since this display is a native landscape display, I didn't have to do any kind of configuration for the resolution. It is running at 2560 by 1600, but for each one of these games, we can always change the resolution from within the game. And of course, since we're not working with a big GPU here, we will have to do that with a lot of this stuff, but I'm seeing some pretty good performance out of most everything that I've tested so far. In just a little while, I'm going to plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. But I wanted to show off a couple games running here. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1200p. FSR is set to performance, low settings, and we're right there around 65 FPS. And I'm just using the preset of low. Remember, you can always go in and change each one of those settings. With Cyberpunk 2077, the low preset doesn't exactly set everything to low. So with that set up, going in there and just changing everything, we can see an average of around 75 FPS out of this game. And it still looks great because we've got that 1200p resolution. I wanted to go back just a little bit to see how these older ones perform because after all we do have that 165 hertz VRR display and yeah we can run over 165 with these type of games so Half-Life 2, Portal, we've got Left 4 Dead 2 here. Very high setting so we're basically maxed out here at 1200p. We're getting an average of around 220 something FPS which is really great, but I know it's an older one. We will be testing out some more newer AAA stuff in just a little while. And of course, the Steam Deck itself does handle these games really, really well, especially the OLED with that 90 hertz display. But I was very interested to see what this tablet would do with these older ones. And yeah, I mean, we're seeing some great performance here. So I've just plugged this into my capture device. And one thing that I noticed when I booted this up on the internal screen was I wasn't hitting 165 Hertz until I disabled Unified Frame Limit Manager. Now we've got VRR enabled. I've got the frame limiter completely off right now, but I needed to go to our display section and all the way at the bottom, Enable Unified Frame Limit Management was enabled right out of the box. So I did disable this and now we can do up to 165 Hertz on the built-in screen. And again, just to show you, we've got that Ryzen 7 8840U, 32 gigs of RAM. By the way, I did go into the BIOS with this thing and allocate six gigs to the iGPU. 
it'll automatically allocate it, but there are some games that you boot up and it says you've got low VRAM. So I just like setting that up right out of the box. And when it comes to TDP adjustment from the BIOS on the V3, we do have basically full control over the TDP. We've got a few different presets and we can set it manually. I go to auto and it usually just defaults to 28 watts. Now going back and forth to the BIOS really doesn't make sense while you're gaming. So there is an application you can install in Chimera OS known as Simple Ryzen TDP, and it is working with the 8840U. I've added this as a Steam item so we can access it at any time, even while we're playing a game. And basically we can set our lowest TDP up to the highest TDP, or we could just set a static TDP across the board. With this, I'm at 10 watts up to 28, starts off at 10 watts, and right now, I'm not trying to get the best battery life out of this tablet running Chimera OS. This isn't optimized specifically for this tablet. We're not going to see the kind of battery life that the Steam Deck OLED gets because there were a lot of people working on that, you know, different power profiles. It's got lower specs also and a smaller screen. I was really just interested to see what this tablet could do when it comes to Linux gaming and something very similar to Steam OS installed. Next up, we're going to go with Horizon Forbidden West. This is one of those games that really does kind of struggle on a lot of these iGPUs. We're at 720p, low settings, and I've been doing a lot of testing with this game on the 8840U. With this uh, tablet and another handheld I have with the same exact chip, I'm seeing better performance in Linux than I am in Windows on both of those devices. And there are a few other games just like that. Cyberpunk 2077, in my opinion, does perform much better on these Ryzen i GPUs in Linux than it does on Windows. Not by much, but you can really tell, especially at those higher TDPs. And with this, I'm seeing anywhere from a 10 to a 20 FPS increase. Here's Spider-Man Remastered 900p, low settings, seeing averages in the mid 70s. Not too bad, but I was kind of expecting a little more out of it given that the game's been out for so long. When this first released, even with Miles Morales, it was kind of hit or miss. So you boot it up one time, it went run well, go out of the game, go back into it, you're getting good frame rate. I'm kind of still seeing the same thing here with Linux in this one. I also wanted to test out Fallout 4. I've been playing it quite a bit recently, given that we have that new update coming out very soon. I don't think I'm really at 1080p. Now from the settings, once you boot the game up, you can choose which settings you want. I've got 1080p and medium chosen. We're getting a steady 120 FPS out of this game. And the reason it's stuck at 120 is because my monitor, I have the tablet plugged in, only goes up to 120. It's a whole thing with my game capture. But if this is the case and it's truly at 1080, then we're getting double the performance here in Linux that we do with Windows, and that's what leads me to believe that it's actually at a lower resolution. And I've seen this happen before with Linux operating systems, especially with something like The Witcher 3, saying that we're at 1080, but it's truly really only running or rendering at 720. But either way, I mean, this is some really awesome performance. Again, I know it's an older one, still a lot of fun to play though. Mortal Kombat 1, 900p, medium settings with FSR set to balanced. We can run this at a constant 60. I mean, we get those dips down to 59 if that frame counter's not on screen. It's something you'll never notice. Fighting games with this setup are pretty awesome. A lot of the stuff that I've tested so far has worked out very well. Games like Street Fighter 6 can run at medium settings, 1200p, constant 60 FPS. And we had to test out Helldivers 2. I'm seeing the same kind of performance here in Linux that I do with Windows, maybe a couple frames less here and there. But overall, 900p low, we're averaging around 78 FPS. With Windows, same exact settings on this tablet, I'm seeing an average of around 82. So they're not that far off from each other. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that not everybody who buys this tablet is going to install a Linux gaming operating system. And of course, a lot of people want a three in one like this for work, maybe some media consumption. And even with this operating system right here, we do have a desktop interface. And the built in touchscreen here actually works out really well with this operating system. Just checking out some Firefox. Uh, I've got the keyboard attached right now. It's one of those magnetic keyboards. Got the trackpad, everything's working here. We've got sound from those quad speakers. Refresh rate is 165 hertz. We could go through, edit some photos on this thing. 
open up the App Store, download emulators, any kind of work applications that you would need. You can download for free here, or you could always open up Terminal and install them. But with Chimera, we've basically got a full-fledged Linux operating system here that's really tailored towards gaming. Of course, in gamepad UI mode, I still call it that. I'm not sure if Valve went back to the uh, big picture mode or not. I don't know exactly what they're calling it. And through all of my testing, I've actually had a pretty good experience on the V3 with Linux. I had a few people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video like this. I know it's not Manjaro, and you could always install Manjaro if you want to. But you know, since we've got the first Ryzen powered tablet, I really wanted to see what kind of gaming we could get out of the way on it. And installing something like Chimera OS to get that Steam Deck OS look until Valve really releases Steam Deck OS to the public, or at least the newer version, could be a good distro choice for people who just want to game in Linux on the Minisform V3 3-in-1 tablet. But it does come pre-installed with Windows. You're not going to get a Linux experience unless you want to install it yourself. And I completely understand if you're not into Linux or Linux gaming at all. A lot of people out there just want to stick to Windows. And if you're interested in seeing how the V3 handles Windows gaming application, I've run some benchmarks. I did a full review on it. I'll leave links for those videos in the description below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on the Minisform V3 tablet, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.